not very good electronically here. I know, we've been in a meeting before and it's gone off. So just a gentle yeah, reminder to put it up here. shut your phone off. Let's see, make sure it's shut off. Well, I got no ring, that's right. They wanted us to start at 7.01, so okay. it's almost 7.01. If you so. say so. Just letting you know. No ring. Right here in case it does ring. Then you'll be able to grab it quick. Be able to shut it off. Hopefully. Oh, Mr. Root. Okay, welcome to this year's Candidates Night, sponsored by The Banner, which has been covering West Boylston since 1978 and the Wachusett Area Chamber of Commerce. We also want to acknowledge the assistance of the West Boylston Public Access Television, which is broadcasting this live and recording it for later viewing on cable channel 194, as well as the WBPA YouTube site. I'm your moderator, Gary Hutner, publisher of The Banner, and we want to remind you that the town election will be Tuesday, June 7th, from noon to 8 p.m. at Our Lady of Good Counsel Church, 111 Worcester Street. The three candidates for the two seats on the Board of Selectmen are inc incumbent Kevin McCormick, incumbent Siobhan Bonson, and Barur Rajesh Kumar who we all know is Raj, and we will call him that for the rest of the night, so it'll make my night a little easier. In addition, there are three other seats with contested races. They are cemetery trustee, one seat for three years. The incumbent is Peter Rotondo, and the challenger is Linda McGrail. There's um, one seat on the housing authority for five years. The incumbent is Brenda Bowman, and the challenger is Jeffrey Legendra. And then there's water commissioners, two seats for three years. The incumbent is James La LaMountain, and the challengers are Alan Phillips and Gary Flynn. So we're going to start with the Board of Selectmen candidates with two-minute introductory statements, then questions from the banner and others submitted to us in advance. Each candidate will have two minutes to respond. After the questions, a two-minute closing statement will follow. We will start alphabetically. Then each succeeding question will advance to the next person to start. Signs will be held up by Jen Stanovich of the Chamber to indicate 30 seconds left. You want to show them the 30 second sign? And when time is up, stop sign. So it's good to, as you're talking, look up every once in a while, so if you're, if you're looking down reading. After the selectmen's portion, candidates for the other contested races will have the opportunity to give three minute statements. That's enough of that. So let's get right into our selectmen candidates. We're going to start with Siobhan Bonson. You give your candidate statement. OK, thank you. I want to thank the Banner and the Wachusa Chamber for hosting this. And I'd also like to thank the two gentlemen next to me for running. I think it's very important that we all show some interest in our town. My name is Siobhan Bonson. I live at 166 Goodale Street. I am seeking a second term as a selectman. And um, I've lived and worked in town over 35 years. My husband and I have raised our two children here. I think it's a great town. I'm very proud of this town. I have a bachelor's degree in business management. And for many years, I worked in banking. Presently, I am the president and CEO of the Milford Area Chamber of Commerce. As a parent, I volunteered many years in our elementary school and at the high school. I find that it's very interesting work to be part of a community, and I am proud to be part of this community. About uh, mid-high school years of my daughters, I ran f and finished seven years as a school committee member, took a couple of years off, and then I was lucky enough to be voted the first woman selectman of this town, and I found that very interesting work as it is. And I hope that you will consider me for the next election. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. McCormick. Yes, hi. Um, my name is Kevin McCormick. Um, I'd like to also thank the banner in the chamber for sponsoring this. Um, I lived in West Boylston my entire life. Um, 
I'm running for my, let's see, sixth term as a selectman. I've served 15 years. Um, and over that 15 years, I've gained a great deal of experience running with the town. I was, I'm, pr I'm proud to say that we've uh, been able to stabilize our financial policies and our budget um, in these some, somewhat tough times um, because of the uh, fiscal policies we've passed. Um, I am also proud of what the sponsor, uh, how much we give to the schools and how much we um, afford the schools well above what the state would uh, requires us to do. Um, because the school is the main thing that people look at when they move to a town, keeps the values up, and certainly we want to keep our town vibrant. Um, like Siobhan, I had had two daughters who both went to school in West Boylston. Um, again, I've been here all my life. I started actually working for the town when I was 14 years old. Um, back in the 60s, you could do that. I worked for the Parks Department, and for the last 51 years, I've actually um, worked for the town in some manner. Um, I'm sure you don't want to hear every little thing that I've done for the last 51 years, but I've always held a position. And with that, um, I wish everyone well, and um, I hope that you'll consider me for a sixth term. Thank you very much. Raj? Good evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Banner, for hosting this candidate night. My name is Raj, and I'm running for selectman. I love this town, and I would like to serve our community. I was born and brought up in a small farming village in India. My parents are simple, loving people who instilled values of determination and strong work ethics. Those values serve me well. I, mig I migrated to the United States to complete my postdoctoral studies at Harvard University, BU Medical School, UMass Medical School. I'm a senior research scientist and a laboratory manager. My wife and I moved to West Boylston, and it is our permanent home. My son Sammy is a software engineer, and my daughter Shivani is studying at Wentworth to become a civil engineer. My experience in public service includes serving our town boards, planning board, board of appeals, economic development, transportation, solid waste, and the naming committee. The first and the foremost important issue I will tackle is to find a permanent home for our seniors. Our schools are good. My goal is to make them better and a desirable school system. We are lucky to have great teachers, administrators, and students. I'm committed to make the school system the best it could possibly be. We need to acquire funds from state, federal, and other agencies to lower our tax burden or to keep our tax at the current level. Our town should attract new businesses as well as retaining current businesses to increase our commercial tax base. I'm immensely proud of, our, of my simple upbringing and the traditional values instilled in me by my parents who supported my determination to break the cycles of simple farm boy elevated to the level of Harvard trained senior research scientist. More importantly, I'm an husband and a father. It is my intention as your selectman to employ those qualities to, to improve our lives and the lives of our children. Thank you. Thank you very much. So our first question will go to Mr. McCormick. There's a lot going on in West Boylston these days. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what are the three top issues for the mm -hmm. town in your perspective right now? Three top issues. Um, Number one is we, we have to deal with the senior center. Um, that's high on the, on the list of items that we have to do. Second of all is uh, maintaining our fiscal policy and, st and stability. Um, we've, with our fiscal policies that we've passed, we've been able to do that. And we, gotta, we have to continue to do that. Um, when I first started, we, our stabilization fund was almost nothing, we had no capital program. Now we have a stable stabilization fund, which kind of sounds funny. Um, and we have a, quite a good capital fund. 
uh, that we are able to put money into every year and get some capital projects. Um, third is always, you know, try to get more money. Um, every year we try, uh, we file legislation to try to get more money for the jail in the reservoir. Um, the reservoir, some people wouldn't realize, we get the most money of any town for having a reservoir in it. Um, if we could get more, it would be great. Uh, of course, always dealing with the state isn't always easy. So I would say those are the three major things. Okay, thank you very much. Raj, the same questions here. Yes, uh, I would say the first and foremost important issue is we need to find a permanent home for seniors. And this has been going on for a long time and we have to find a home. And that's my first and foremost issue. The second one is we have to get funding from state, federal, as well as the other agencies. So this, a lot of board members are volunteers and they don't have the time to write the grants. So it's been, we need to have some dedicated person to write the grants, to get the money to our towns, to supplement our tax or other spendings. The third one is very important for me is the schools. The, as I said, the schools are doing good, but uh, due to the, uh, uh, the, the children's going to the Asabat Valley, we are losing lots and lots of money. So is there a, how we can stop that or how we can minimize it or how we can bring it uh, for our West Wiles and kids stay here and by that way, you know, we can reduce the number of kids coming from other towns as a school choice. So with that, we could save lots of money as a Lots of money over there. And also the roads, some of our roads are very, very, very bad. So we do need to have a kind of a plan, or we have to have, stick to the plan, fix those roads. Thank you Thank very you. much. Ms. Bonson. Thank you. Um, I guess, with, like everybody else, we um, are looking for a nice permanent home for our seniors. I know that um, at town meeting, we just allocated some money to do some research on that. As a Board of Selectmen, we supported it. We did try um, last year to see what we could work out, so now we're going forward. They do need and they do deserve a nice building where they can get the programs that they need and the services that they need, and I fully support that. Um, the other thing that I feel is very important is open communication amongst all of our areas within this town. When I first came to the school committee, the communication between school, school committee boards was not very good, and I worked very hard on that as a school committee person, and I feel that we have accomplished that between our other town boards, the Board of Selectmen, and we have really come to an agreement to support one another throughout everything that we need to do. Um, the other thing is, as people know, we are working on a police station, so we need to go forward and make sure that's completed in a responsible way. And as part of the FISC committee, I feel that we are moving forward in doing that. And um, the other thing I think we need to recognize is library. Oh, we just got some funds for that, and we're updating the computer system over there. So I really think that we're offering what we need to offer to the townspeople and support the townspeople in the right way. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, this next question, we're gonna start with you, Raj. As one of five members on the board, how can you make a difference? I'm running for the selectman because I care. I'm running for a selectman, I, uh, It is very important for me to give back to the society where I am. I'm running for the selectman and I ask for the, your vote because I think the priorities. There are so many things get to be get done, like this senior center, schools, our budget, and we need to take care of the roads and businesses. We need to bring in 
more businesses to our town to keep our tax base, commercial tax base increase and that resident tax base goes down. I'm dedicated, I'm determined individual with the vision for the future. I continue to be an advocate, listening, listening to all ideas and concerns in effort to address the needs of our town. I'm determined to work with the fellow residents and board members on common goals of moving West Boylston into the future based on a high standards we all deserve. So that's my goal. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Bonds. I feel that I can, excuse me, bring a different perspective. I feel that when I do something, I get in and I really get involved. Um, as school committee, I gave it 120%. I feel that I'd rather concentrate on certain areas to improve things. And I always feel that when it comes to my vote that it's important and I have stood and voted by myself on more than one occasion. That's where I think I really bring a different perspective. And I think it's good to have an open mind and listen to everything and then make your decision. And that's what I truly try to do for this board. Thank you. Mr. McCormick. Uh, yes. Um, I've been here for 15 years, um, so I, I, I had the ability to talk to new members, other members um, that, are, that are on the board with some of the issues that have happened in the past. Um, over the 15 years, I've been the chairman either nine or 10 years of that. Um, and as the chairman, you obviously have a little bit more oomph when you go to a meeting. Um, but we, we get along fine. We can all talk together. And because of my past experience and my knowledge of the town, um, I offer a different perspective than, say, anyone else. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, this next question, we're going to start with Ms. Bonson. The first question we asked you was, what were your top three issues? You all named some of the same, a couple of others, but there's a lot going on. How would you prioritize the many projects the town is considering or committed to? A police station, a senior center, a potential $18 million project at Goodale Park, and how would you balance the impact on tax bills? Well, I think the town is listening to the town they've already prioritized. Um, we're standing in this new, what I still consider a new town hall that took a long time but we listened to the voters and this is what we got. We are doing the same thing with the police station. Um, we have lined up the steps already for the senior center. And yes, it is a balance and the, the project that might get done on Goodale Street um, on the parks I think is superb. And yes, we have to be fiscal responsibility and, and use our, our money in the right way. Um, there is no way of doing all of this without impacting some of what's going to happen to the taxpayers but with some of the projects that are already rolling off and new ones are coming in a lot of times it's close to a wash so i i think what we do is listen to the townspeople because that's why we're here we're here to help the townspeople and help the town so by listening to them that will help us go further in, in our future okay thank you mr mccormick yes hi um to prioritize them obviously the uh, the police stations already done it's uh, we're, we're working on it right now we have meetings um, constantly with the uh, with not the contractor but uh, the operation person um, and that money most of that money came from money that rolled off of the tax rolls from other um, tax uh, debt overrides so that, that's gonna be kind of like a wash, that one. Uh, Goodale Park, 18 million. We have $5 million stuck right now in a bond bill that's at, in the State House. And we have like three years to try to get them to release that money. They just released the 40,000 that was in that same bond bill for the library. Now we gotta work on them, really work on them to try to get the 5 million. Will we ever do the 18 million all at once? I doubt very much. It'll have to be done in parts. And again, we'll have to minimize the tax impact by what's coming off the, off the books. Um, 
and I'm sorry, I don't remember the third thing. Well, there wasn't, it was, I was asking oh. you to prioritize. Oh, what the, the um, in, in our roads, uh, roads are a big issue. Uh, we, we're working on those. We have a, a, a roads program that we passed and the planning board went and did a, a complete roads program. It's another aspect of how we can get things done to make the thing more, uh, the road safer when it gets rebuilt. So um, we're working on those things and hopefully a little or no impact to the town. Thank you. Raj? Uh, how to prioritize? The police station, the last uh, year, you know, we approved for 2.9 million. So that we do, ha it has to, they do deserve, they do need a police station. The senior center is, as I said earlier, again and again, that's my first priority. So the last year, but the last year for the senior center at the Bethlehem Bible Church, it was estimated like, but I don't know how much this, this year it will go, maybe. So that's uh, based on that. I think last year it was one million. So this, year, this time, if we have to build a senior center at the mixture place from the scratch, it might cost us much more than one million. So, but I'm supporting the senior center. Goodell Park, 18 million. The total tax revenue, what we get is 22 million. Out of 22 million, the school gets it 11 million. So, and the rest goes to run the town. So, do we really afford to spend 18 million on a Goodell Park, parks development? I would say, I would support the necessary changes, necessary improvement to the Goodell Park. So we have done the study, we will keep the study, and then when the time comes in, if we have the money, we'll go to, we will do it by, by part by part. The roads are very, very bad, again. So the roads needs to be completed. So with the complete state policy, we will be getting $40,000 just to make the roads pedestrian, bicycle, and uh, uh, friendly. And once we get it, we can get $400 million, $400 million on that okay. to make the real, real improvement. That's okay. my period. Thank you very much. The next question will start with Mr. McCormick. A local wetlands protection bylaw proposal failed at the recent town meeting. How do you feel the State Wetlands Protection Act should be enforced in West Wales? Well, my understanding is uh, right now we, we have this, we have the Cohen Act, we have the state, and we have the federal wetlands acts. And that's what we rely on, and I, I believe that's why it failed at, at the town meeting. Um, I don't know as much as obviously as the people who sit down and, and deal with the Wetlands Act as much as, um, I certainly don't know as much as they do, but it would seem that we do have some pretty decent coverage. Um, and to further regulate building and et cetera in town by an additional wetlands regulations, um, it would be difficult, I believe, on the town. So I think, um, what we have has worked so far, so. Thank you. Raj? So the wet, wetland bylaw didn't go through the town, town meeting. The reason I came to know, or the reason it could be, the bylaw needs consider, considerable revision. So the, with that bylaw, my understanding is it gives you lots of power to the town and town or the board. So that's the reason the wordings, uh, the bylaw need to be reworded so that it, it won't affect the citizens of our town. So for the time being, you know, we have, the bylaw is there, the laws are there, we'll just follow the laws until the 
wetland bylaw, they re rewrite and bring it back to the town meeting again. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Bonson? Um, in speaking to the people of the town, um, I was told that they felt there was too many regulations and the, um, that there were too many rules and with the bylaws already that we had, that was enough. I understand that maybe um, the group was trying to recommend and change it that they could really um, put into effect some of the fines, but I don't think that really came across at town meeting and we have to go with what the town's people voted and they did and for that I support that decision. Okay, thank you very much. This next question, we're gonna start with you Raj. One means of reducing the increase in taxes each year is to increase businesses that add revenue to the town. What type of business development options do you see for West Boylston? So I would say, you know, we need to bring in, there are a lot of places uh, in uh, Hartwell, Susbury Street, and uh, even the center of the town. There are a lot of vacant buildings are there. So the best way we could uh, increase the uh, business tax revenue is we can get some of the companies, attract some companies, and also in the downtown area, a lot of small businesses. And as, as well as, you know, we have good transportation means to connect to the 190 as well as 290, Route 9. So our town could attract some of the software companies, so which uh, doesn't need a lot of uh, industrial waste or those things. So I would say, like, those are all the sorts of companies we could attract. Yeah, thank you very much. Ms. Bonson? Um, I think we attract a lot of small companies. Um, I also look down the street and we're building a Cumberland Farms. Um, they're coming in, so we are reaching out to some companies. Um, what attracts us is the community. You know, one reason I and my husband moved here is because of the community, and it is easy access to go different places. And we have promoted the town and have um, seen some growth in small business development. So I think there's definitely a potential there. Um, we're kind of the, one of the quiet unknowns in the area, and that has some positive and some negatives to it. But obviously, like I said, on you drive route, down Route 12, there's a lot of business on that road, and I think we are welcoming, and we've been working on that. This board, um, as I sit as selectman now, we have, since I've been here and I know before me, have tried to work with other companies to bring them in. So that is just an ongoing um, situation that we try and deal with all the time. Yeah, thank you. Mr. McCormick. Um, yes. Uh, it's, it's somewhat difficult to attract a lot of any kind of big businesses. We don't have much land left. Shrewsbury and Hotwell Street are basically, it's a couple empty buildings um, that could be filled, but they're already there. Uh, there's a couple lots, I believe, maybe one lot left on Century Drive in Worcester. You come off of it from Worcester. Um, that could hold a bigger company. Um, we also have an industrial area over on Raymond J. Huntington Highway, I believe. There's some zoned land over there. Um, again, kind of a difficult location, not the best. Um, as far as small businesses, like Mrs. Bonson said, we have Cumberland Farms coming in. Um, we had we got two new ice cream on our frozen yogurt places coming in to town this for this summer. So, I mean, that's good, and if we could fill up all of the other spots, that would be excellent. We have our economic development um, task force, who, um, who the board of selectmen established uh, some years back, and they worked very hard on uh, putting together, they put together a brochure to um, let people know what we have, what we are, can offer. So that would seem to me to be a situation. Okay, thank you very much. All right, one more question, then we'll get to closing statements. You guys are hanging in there great. This question, we're gonna start with Ms. Bonson. Education is an expensive part of the town budget. Everyone wants to improve schools without breaking the budget. How would you work to develop a budget that fairly funds schools without penalizing other town departments? 
I totally support the schools. Um, one reason I was on school committee for, was for seven years was um, to help create that. Now the school budget is really done by the superintendent. We don't write her budget. That's the way it is. She has so much money and she deals with it. We have done quite well with um, offering school choice money. Um, I believe we do have a very good program over there. I don't think um, they have I know they have tried many different ways to look at people going to other schools, and it's not just the technical schools, it's also the private schools um, for all ages, not just the older high school and middle school. So I think it goes back to one of the ways that I said communicating between all of the departments and negotiating and putting out a program that we can be proud of because People say they, one reason they moved to town is for the school system. It was one reason my husband and I moved here. We wanted a nice size school. We didn't want a huge region, regional school. And I still feel today that we do give a very good program for our area. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. McCormick. Uh, yeah, I, I believe we've almost accomplished what the question asks. We, we do. Uh, budget give the schools a great deal of money over and above what we need to in the millions of dollars um, to meet their needs uh, we do have open communications with the schools um, when I first started being a selectman we couldn't be in the same room together selectman and school committee now we s can sit down with them at any point in time and talk our town administrator and the superintendent of schools uh, become friends and they can talk and work uh, budget items. So um, I, I think we're there, we, we have a good relationship. Um, sure, could we do better by not having so many kids go away, like to the Yassabet, um, but they wanna take up some technical um, programs that we can't offer. So there's really not much we can do and I, I know the schools are looking into trying to get us into a, to become a member of a, of a, a district, but we're not having a great deal of luck because um, nobody really wants to, another member. Um, so as usual, we stand alone um, as around here. We're one of the very few schools that does our own, but has our own school system, K through 12, and um, I didn't move here to, because of the school system. I was already here. Um, but it was very good for my kids, and, and I think it's uh, great for the kids of today. Thank you. Thank you. Our schools are good. My goal is to make them better and desirable school system. We are lucky to have great teachers, administrators, and students. I'm committed to the make the school system the best it could possibly be. The one way we could focus on the school choice. And also, well, the kids going to the Asabet Valley. One, for, when the kids go to Asabet Valley, it is $18,000 per year and $50,000 for busing. So can we bring in, I know that in Asabet Valley there are trades. In West Boylston, we had trade classes. Can we bring in trade classes? Can we get some fundings outside sources? I, I do know that no one wants us to be a member of uh, other schools. We, as I said, I would explore and find soli solutions to the school choice with the help of our school committee and the school administrators. We do need to motivate our uh, eighth graders about the important of, importance of staying in high school, getting a uh, regular education rather than a technical education. Technical education is good, but I like to, uh, I like to our uh, West Boyles and kids to stay in our school system. So that way, our town will attract more residents 
if the school system is good, more residents, if the more residents comes in, we could get much more tax. That's how I look at it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now we'll do closing statements. You have two minutes for your closing statement. Mr. McCormick, you go first. Uh, well, hopefully I don't take even two minutes here. Um, I, I certainly hope that you'll consider me for another term. Um, I know I've been here a long time, but I have a unique experience. I've, I've dealt with all three town administrators that the town's ever had. Um, and I've been lucky enough to choose the last two. Um, and, and Mr. Gamon was a great find, and I believe uh, Ms. Scheiper is just as, uh, gonna be just as nice and, and work out just as well. Um, I certainly have a, a valued interest in West Boylston, having lived here my whole life. Um, like I tell people, I was born here and I'm gonna die here. I don't see me going anywhere else. Um, I've always dealt well with my fellow selectmen, and um, I think we've, over the years, have done a huge amount of work uh, with fiscal policies. Um, even the Mr. I see Mr. Um, I see Alan um, in this thing where we did the sex offender by law, where they could live, uh, which was a huge thing, and it became a statewide model. So um, things like that that we were able to do. So I hope you'll consider me, and um, I hope to see you on the 7th. And don't forget to check McCormick, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Raj? Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching at home. West Boylston is wonderful to me and my family. It is a wonderful place to live and raise children. I'm committed to our town and happy to serve several town boards. Board of Selectmen set the direction for the town and I would like to help guide the town over the next three years. I believe my upbringing, traditional values, academic training, technical and professional skills, and public service make me, makes me the best candidate for this position. I will apply my experience with social media to provide a link to our community to connect with their government. I will work hard, be honest, transparent. I will be your voice in the select board. I make my decision based on what I believe is best for all of West Boylston, not just myself or any particular group or person. I make myself available, listen to your concerns, and find solutions. It is my intention as your selectman to employ those qualities to improve our lives and the lives of our children. I think I can provide voters of West Boylston with a good positive option in the upcoming election. Please choose me as one of your one or one of your two votes for selectmen. I appreciate your vote on June 7th. I thank everyone for the opportunity. Thank the banner for arranging this candidate night. I would also like to wish my opponent well. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. Ms. Bonson. Thank you. I'd like to say that I'm very proud to have sat on this board for three years, and I hope to be sitting on it again for another three years. As this board, you can see that we've done lots in the town. As you look out these windows, the sidewalks, as you look around in this building, this is a new building. The town, it should be proud of the Board of Selectmen, and we are very united in working together within the town as well as a board. We don't always vote the same. We all come from different perspectives, and that's a good thing for a board. We have a new town administrator. There's a lot of changes going on in this town, and I hope that you can see that I would be a person to continue that and make us responsible going forward as we have been. So in closing, I ask for your vote on June 7th, and just go and vote. It's important that you vote no matter who you vote for, but it's very important to have your vote counted, and please do so. Thank you. 
Well, thank you very much. A round of applause for our candidates. <laughs> thank you very much, all of you. So now we're going to, um, for those candidates who are here for contested boards, we're going to invite each of them to make a three-minute candidate's announcement. I'm not Thank sure you. of everybody who's here, but we're going to start with the, where should we start? We're going to start with the Housing Authority. So who's here for the Housing Authority? Are you both here? Yes. Oh, you're both here. Okay, so we'll start with, um, we'll start with the incumbent, and that's Brenda Bowman. Okay, so he's up for. Oh, well, he is here. Okay, and Gary Flynn is here too. Oh, we're not on. So we can swear and do all sorts of crazy things. Is that Give the thumbs up, but I'm not going to give it until you guys say you're ready. So you're ready? ready? Okay. Okay. We're good to go? All right. All right. We're now going to have the Housing Authority candidates, and we're going to start with the incumbent, Brenda Bowman. Uh, Brenda Bowman, 18 Crescent Street. I have called West Boylston my home for most of my life, except for the 24 years that I lived in New York City in Los Angeles, working for Trans World Airlines and traveling the world. When my mom became ill, I quit my job. I moved back home with my husband and my three small children. I became a foster mom for many years for many children that went through the West Boston school system, as my own children did. They played sports, and they were in Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. And one of my sons acquired the Eagle Scout status. I have been committed to this town in many ways throughout the years and have been on many committees. To name a few, I've been on the Sustainability Committee, the Housing Partnership Committee. I have been on the Open Space and Implementation Committee for over 10 years, the Community Preservation Act Committee. I have been active with senior citizens and the Senior Center and used to deliver Meals on Wheels. And that's what brought me about being on the Housing Authority Committee with its very limited budget from the DHCD. And if re-elected, I will continue to work on and achieving the mission of which is to offer its residents a clean, a safe, and a well-maintained living environment in which to live. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Bob. Mr. Legendre. Good evening. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Jeff Legendre. I've been a resident of West Boylston for almost three years now. I was born and raised in the town of Oxbridge, uh, where community service was uh, installed in me in a very early age. Uh, my father served as 37 years as a firefighter, retiring at the, as a captain in Uxbridge. I too followed in his footsteps and have been a firefighter now for uh, approximately, tw well, for 20 years, come March. Um, moved to Northboro, where I currently am a full-time firefighter and paramedic, where I met my wife, Renee, who is a music teacher in the city of Fitchburg, and uh, have two children, uh, Ava, uh, age nine and Max, age three. So we use and have been involved with a lot of the schools and community projects such as Girl Scouts, PTO. After, shortly after moving to town, I felt that I needed to become more involved in the town. So I met with the fire chief and was appointed uh, December of 2013 as a call firefighter. One year ago, I was appointed to the rank of lieutenant, 
where I currently hold a, uh, the rank of lieutenant and firefighter. Part of my um, background is I'm the fire prevention officer for all residential structures in the town of Northboro. What does that entail? I have extensive background of working with several agencies, including federal, state, and local related to housing. This would be include the day-to-day -day business, as well as the times of declared disaster. For example, in 2005, I served uh, with FEMA uh, in Waveland and Bay St. Louis for community stabilization, including housing. I'm very versed in local, state, and federal building codes due to my working uh, with the fire prevention officer. Uh, I also teach at uh, Anna Maria College. I do hold a Master's of Public Administration and an undergrad in Fire uh, Administration. These are some of the talents that I wish that, that I think I could bring to the Housing Authority. I like to teach. Some programs that we could offer to our residents would include fall prevention um, in concert with uh, local officers such as the Veterans Agent, fire, police, and the council aging to provide uh, cooking safety, fall prevention, file of life, and family and elder safety, to name a few. I'm aware a lot of these programs are currently in place, but would be um, continuing them uh, from here on out. I thank you for the time to speak, and I hope for your vote June, June 7th. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, thank you Cynthia. Okay. <laughs> So we'll, um, there are two seats available for water commissioners. I know Mr. Phillips is here. Uh, any of the other candidates here for water commissioner? Doesn't look like it, so you'll have the stage to yourself, Mr. Phillips. Thank you. I don't think we took any recess here, so they haven't popped out of the room, so. Whenever you're ready, feel free to jump on right in. As soon as I put these things on, <laughs> I won't ready. Okay, uh, well, good evening, everyone. My name's Alan Phillips, and I'm seeking the uh, position of water commissioner within the town. A uh, little bit about my background. I do have a degree in business management and administration, and I've lived in West Boston for approximately 20 years now. After I moved here, uh, both myself and my wife got involved immediately. Uh, I served on the Conservation Commission for a number of years, and I became a selectman for uh, 10 years. Um, uh, in addition to that, I am also a 16-year uh, member of the uh, fire department, and I currently am also there as well, where I serve as the uh, chairman of the West Boston Fire, or I'm sorry, president of the West Boston Firefighters Association. Um, in addition to that, I also volunteer um, as the president, now newly elected president, of the West Boston Athletic Association, where we raise funds for the student athletes at the school. Uh, I live here in town with my wife and my two children, Madison and Zachary, who uh, both attend, well, one attended West Boston School, the other is off at college now. Um, in addition to that, I, I volunteered on many other different boards and commissions through my uh, years in town. I just feel it, that everybody should take uh, time to volunteer and do things within their town, especially if you love the community you live in, and I do. Um, full time, I work for the Commonwealth of Mass and the Emergency Management Agency, where I deal with uh, water emergencies on a, a pretty much a weekly basis. Um, I was born and raised in Flint, Michigan, so the water issue out in Flint, Michigan hits very close to home for me. My family's all out there still. And, you know, I, one thing that, one reason I want to be on this water board is I want to ensure that we never have that type of an issue within our own community. Um, but other than that, and, you know, replacing uh, aging infrastructure, I, I look at the Water Commission and the Water Department as one of those things in town, if it's working well, don't try to fix it. And I think our Water Department gives us good, solid drinking water right now, and it's something that we, we should uh, work to maintain it the way it is. And other than that, I think that would be it. Mr. McCormick, you could have used this a little while ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> we also have a race to cemetery trustee. Are either of the candidates to cemetery trustee here? 
Okay. And is that it? Was there, you said there was someone from planning board? No? No, it's not contested. Not contested, but not so sorry. Okay, well, we want to thank everybody who turns out tonight, um, the candidates especially for um, going through that. I want to thank Jen Stenovich from the Wachusett Chamber of Commerce for, um, for assisting tonight, the um, West Boylston Public Access Television for um, broadcasting this live and taping it, Jan Gottesman and Ken Cleveland of the, um, of the banner, and make sure to read the banner every week. Get that plug in there as well, and thank you all for attending tonight. Thank you.